Welcome back TCS viewers, it's Chris Nichols here from the Camera Store TV. Today we're looking at the Canon EOS M mirrorless. Now I know it's it's been out for a little while, you know, we haven't been in a huge rush to get this video out, and that's because Canon have not been in a huge rush to get this camera out. Quite simply put folks, you could say that the Canon EOS M is a little bit late to the mirrorless party. Hey guys, hey I'm finally here, let's get this party started! Oh man, it's Cannon! Who invited him? Oh, hey Cannon, we gotta start without you, you're pretty late. Look baby, we all know it's not a party until Cannon shows up, okay? Now here, you wanna take a look at my huge sensor? Let me just pop this lens off here. Please, no, no! Oh Cannon, oh, keep it on your lens mount. Please, it's not that impressive. Sony's still a little bit bigger. It sure is. Mine's not! Well, we'll check back with Canon EOS M at that mirrorless party, see if he does any better. But while I've got you, I want to talk to you about the handling and design of this camera. Now, there's things I like about this camera, especially the small size. It's very compact, you can take it anywhere, and it's great considering it's got such a big APS-C size sensor. But that small size does give us some issues too, especially with the grip. Now, if I pinch this camera with my finger and thumb where they want you to do it, it works, but it just doesn't feel secure. The camera feels like it wants to fall out of my hand, and you couple that with this very slippery finish, and I mean, it's scary. Couple that with the fact that I don't use a strap on my cameras, and this camera will probably end up in the river here in a few minutes. Now, if I grab it more comfortably, the way I'd want to, like an SLR, I get my fingers on this thing, my thumb hits the screen or my palm hits the screen, and it invertedly, like it just did there, takes a photograph without me wanting it to. Now, you know, when it comes to the touch screen feature, I'm going to disable that, that touch shutter. So I'm never going to use that because I'm going to take photos I don't want. But Canon's touch screens are very nice. I mean, they work. You touch the button, it goes to it. None of this hitting things three times to get it to go. So I like that. Nice clear screen, but you better like it because you don't have an optional viewfinder attachment. Otherwise, the camera's laid out very well. The, the movie button's in a good place, and I don't feel like I'm going to hit it by accident. We've got a dial lever to switch between auto, uh, our regular shooting modes, and then movie mode. It's very reminiscent of a point-and-shoot camera, in fact. Now, of course, on the top, we've got our standard Canon Speedlight uh, hot shoe, but of course, you're not going to use any Canon Speedlights on here because they're huge for a camera this size. What you will notice, though, is a distinct lack of on-camera flash. There's nothing on this body, so Canon does give you a small little speed light that comes with the EOS M. I mean, it's okay. It's like a Sony NEX 5R or something. You're going to have to carry this around with you when you want flash. If you forget it at home, you better hope you got fast lenses. Now, when it comes to image quality on the M, overall it does take very nice photos. 18 megapixels puts it in about the middle of the pack when it comes to resolution in the mirrorless market, but uh, I just feel like I've seen these photos before. And you know, I actually have because, and you have too, because if you have a Rebel T2i or T3i or T4i or 60D or 7D, well, you've already seen these images. Pretty good low light is, is what Canon's characterized for, but with a bit of softness as you go to high ISO. This thing goes up to 25,600 ISO if you push it. And as you can see, it's not great, but you know, the fact is, I've been waiting so long for a mirrorless camera now from Canon, and I get a sensor which is years old. <laughs> I don't know, folks, I just, I expected more out of the camera, but I can't say it takes bad photos. They are nice, they're just nice two years ago. All right, folks, now, of course, Canon is a, a really big company. They make a lot of lenses, and they're famous for them. And, of course, the Canon EOS M uses a brand-new Canon mount. So you'd think a big company like that will give us a huge array of lenses. Well... If two is a lot of lenses, then yes, you get a lot of lenses. But you know, obviously Canon's gonna come out with more. I am impressed by these lenses though. You know, this 18-55 to that they give you, it's really nice. Handsome lens, all metal construction. I really didn't expect this either. Look at that lens mount, beautiful steel mount. I really expected that we'd get plastic at this sort of price point. So really nice, it really blows the 18-55 to Rebel kit lens out of the water as far as build quality goes. STM motor and image stabilizer as well. And then the 22mm that they give you, the pancake lens, is a beautiful street lens. They're giving you a classic 35mm wide angle range. You get an f2 aperture and it's nice and compact. And again, equally well built. I really do 
hope that the lenses that they're going to come out with in the future have the same kind of build quality. Now, of course, Canon was smart to let you also fire the camera without lenses, and that opens up a whole bunch of adapters like all the other mirrorless companies, you know, like uh, maybe even Nikon's on a Canon. That would be a travesty, but you can certainly do it too. You can even use the classic FD lenses and breathe new life into that. So a really, really nice touch on these lenses. Another cool thing, of course, that you can do is use your classic EOS EF lenses. Now, that's interesting. They're going to be big, but there is an adapter, and the adapter gives you autofocus with all their lenses. You even get image stabilization support too. So that'll be a nice option if you're an existing Canon user. You know, one thing I really wish I had here was an external viewfinder. In this bright sun, the screen's not bad, but it's hard to judge things like proper exposure and focus here without it. And you know, it's not like this camera's uh, super inexpensive either. It's right up there with cameras like the Sony NEX6, so viewfinder would be nice. Now, Canon, of course, have developed quite a presence when it comes to video in the cinematic industry with their SLRs, and the Canon EOS M is borrowing all that good technology as well. In fact, just to make a long story short, it feels like I'm shooting a Rebel T3i or T4i on a small camera when it comes to video. You get 30 frame per second, 24 frame per second, and you get 60 frame per second, but only at 720. Now, of course, that's the same as Rebels, but why I mention that is you can get something like a Sony NEX6 now, and that'll give you 60p at 10. 80. So, you know, Canon, it is great video quality. Uh, you get full manual control, you get good audio control, but some of the other competitors are starting to push that envelope a little bit further than Canon is. Yeah, that looks nice. You know, I mean, one of the great things about this camera is just being able to make really high quality video in such a small package. The only thing I really don't like about this camera's video is that it's too much like an existing Rebel. We're still not getting a headphone jack. The preamp in here, it's still not great for when you're putting sound in. We have the mic import, but it's no good if you're going to hiss and hum. So I would have liked to have seen Canon give us a little bit more in a camera like this. Maybe it's just because this is the first outing, but still, it could have been a very, very cool thing to have. Now, if there is one big criticism floating all over the place about the Canon M, it's the autofocusing speed and how slow it is. And I have to agree, it just doesn't get you there quickly. It's strange too, because every other manufacturer on the planet makes a camera which focuses quicker than this thing. It reminds me a lot of using a Rebel T4i in live view mode focusing. And if you watch our T4i video, you'll know we weren't very impressed with that. It's accurate, it gets you there, it just takes too long. Now, of course, forget about using it in movie mode, it's too slow to track any sort of moving subjects. Now, you can manual focus, and I will say the lenses have beautifully dampened manual focusing rings, and you're going to need them because you're going to use manual focus a lot. You know, no peaking either. I don't know. When you stack the Canon M up against its peers in the autofocusing department, it just can't compete. Yeah, I know, I only have two lenses right now, but you know, for the time being, I can just borrow some hand-me-downs from my big brother Canon. I yeah, think he's got yeah, a 50 yeah, one that's, that's great, man. Oh, Laika's here. Laika, what up, bro? Hello, my friends. <gasps> oh, my. I can see the outline of his full-frame sensor through that huge lens. Oh, guys, guys, can you get a picture of me with Laika over here? You're my inspiration. <laughs> I want to be just like you when I grow up. Yeah, yeah, take a number. <laughs> oh, <laughs> truly <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, well, at least... I can autofocus like a... Oh, please. It's called hyperfocal distance. Read a book. I, I'm a canon. You can't do this to me. I'm a canon. Hey, those guys don't understand me either. You want to hang out? My cousin Q is over. So here's what I think. You know, the Canon EOS M, it's not a bad camera. It takes great photos. It's got some nice handling features. It's compact. But you know... Canon just has this attitude that there's no mirrorless market until they enter the frame and make a mirrorless camera. And they have, and this is what we've been waiting for. You know, I think the fact is that Canon has been waiting so long that now they're getting left in the dust. Maybe Canon doesn't want to hurt their SLR market. Maybe that's why they've kept this camera from being as good as it could have been. I don't know, but that logic just doesn't make sense, folks. I mean, is mirrorless the new future of cameras or SLRs destined to fail? I don't know, but... If you're gonna have SLRs fail and mirrorless take over, wouldn't you want it to be your brand that does it and not Fuji or Sony? Hopefully the new Canon M's that come out in the future will respond better to the market than this one does. And if you wanna be a Canon loyal user, go for it, buy the M. 
But if you're fresh out looking for a new mirrorless camera, look at the other competitors too. Fuji, Sony, Nikon, they all have a lot to offer and in some cases more.